Hello viewers, this is Gina. In this video, you will be learning the French Revolution. The topic is based on the CVSE class 9th syllabus. The main purpose of this video is to make the viewers or students familiar with the main causes and initiating forces of the revolution the evolving ideas, especially liberty, freedom, and equality that inspired the revolution, the people or leaders involved, and its impact to the society. First of all, what is the French Revolution? What is it about? It was a period of a major social upheaval in France when people sought to completely change the relationship between the rulers and those they govern, that is their subject, and to redefine the nature of political power. It started on July 14, 1789, when revolutionaries stormed a prison called the Bastille and lasted for 10 years. The revolution came to an end in 1799, when a general named Napoleon overthrow the revolutionary government and established the French consulate under his leadership. In spite of a chaotic bloodshed, the French revolution took an important role in shaping the idea of modern nationalism by showing the world the power inherent in the hand of the people. Now, let us try to examine what were the pre-existing conditions of French society, the causes of the French Revolution, how it started and why, what were the changes and the results it brought, and finally, how it influenced globally. So, how was the French society before the French Revolution, that is the pre-existing social structure? which is very important to know. The pre-existing society and institutions of France before 1789 was also known as the old regime. In this old regime, the society was divided into three states, which is shown in the picture. That is the clergy, the nobility, and the third state, including a few numbers of big businessmen, merchants, court officials, lawyers, etc., and a larger population of peasants, artisans, landless laborers, and servants. The first two states, that is the clergy and the nobility, enjoyed certain privileges by birth. For example, the clergy got extraction of tithe. Tithe is a type of tax levied by the church. And similarly, the nobility also enjoyed feudal privileges. Both the states were exempted from paying taxes to the state. Meanwhile, about 60% of the land was owned by the nobles, the church, and other richer members of the third state, although 90% of the total population were peasant. Peasants were also indulged to serve the nobles that is working in their houses and fields or serving in army or working in the construction of roads. Besides, all members of the third state had to pay taxes to the state, including a direct tax called tile, and a number of indirect taxes which were levied on articles of everyday consumptions like salt or tobacco. So all the financing activities through taxes were delivered only by the third state. So in this social structure, how was the French Revolution started and what were the main causes of the revolution? Firstly, in 1774, Louis XVI, who was only 20 years old from the Bourbon family, became the king of France and married to an Austrian princess named Mary Antoinette. However, people were unhappy for his poor economic policies and inability to connect with its people. Secondly, 
France involved in a war for a long time, especially the American Revolution, by helping the American colonies to get independence from the Great Britain. So it drained the financial resources of France. The war added more than a billion levels to a debt that had already risen to more than two billion levels. Here, Labour was the unit of currency in France, which was discontinued in 1794. So, France had more than 3 billion of debt during the time, and therefore the state had to borrow credit or loans from lenders at 10% interest rate. Also, to meet its, its regular expenses, such as the cost of maintaining an army, the court, and running government offices or universities, the state was forced to increase taxes. The situation was again worsened by repeat poor harvest, drought, cattle diseases, and skyrocketing bread prices that is daily essential needs of the people, which ignited unrest among the peasant and the urban poor. There was a rapid increase in the demand of food grain as the population of France reached 28 million in 1789. However, wages of many workers or laborers did not increase accordingly with the rise in price of the basic food. So it led to a wider gap between the poor and the rich. Such an extreme situation where the basic means of livelihood are endangered could also be called a subsistence crisis during the old regime of France. Due to such above chaotic situation, Louis XVI, that is the king, had to reform the state's financial policy and increase taxes to relieve the economic crisis. In the old regime of France, the king did not have the power to impose taxes according to his will alone. Rather, he had to call the meeting of the state's general, which would then pass his proposal for new taxes. The state general was a political body to which the three states sent their representatives. Uh, the picture which is shown uh, here is um, one of the events um, of the state general meeting. However, the king alone could decide uh, when to call the meeting of this body. Again, new ideas of liberty, equality and democratic rights were intensively discussed and spread among peoples through books, newspapers and even reading aloud for those who could not read and write. On the other hand, people were angry and protested against the system of privileges. In these socio-economic and political conditions, there was a rise of a new class called middle class. Earlier, peasants and workers were against uh, increasing taxes and food scarcity, but they could not revolve in full scale due to the lack of leadership, guidance, resources, and organization that is systematic arrangement among themselves. During this time, there was an emergence of a new social group called the middle class within the third state. This new group of the third state was comprised of people who were prosperous due to their successful overseas as well as inland trade and manufacture of goods like woolen and textile, uh, silk textile, and those are the groups of population who had access to education, new ideas including uh, professionals such as lawyers or administrative officials. This group of people was strongly against the existing system of privileges by birth. They also believed that a person's social position must depend on his merit. Philosophers like John Locke, 
Jean Jacques Rousseau and Montesquieu envisioned and influenced the mass of a society. Sorry, the mass for a society based on freedom, equal laws, and equal opportunity for all. In the book, Two Treaties of Government, John Locke, who is the writer of this book, strongly argued and refuted the doctrines of the divine and absolute right of the monarch. Similarly, Rousseau's book, The Social Contract, proposed and advocated for a uh, for a form of government based on a socially bound agreement between peoples and their representatives. Also, another French philo uh, political philosopher, Montesquieu, who wrote the book The Spirit of the Laws, advocated for a division of powers within the government through the legislative, the executive, and the judiciary. The ideas and envision of these philosophers became intensively popular through books and newspapers which i just mentioned in the previous video uh, slide uh, they were discussed in people's places like salons and coffee houses their ideas and writings were frequently read out loudly in groups especially for majority of people who were illiterate during the time then the first demand of voting rights as called by the king an assembly of the state general to pass proposal for new taxes was held in versailles on the 5th may 1789 for the first time after 1614 that is in the 17th century in that assembly 300 representatives each from the first two states that is the clergy and the nobility and 600 representatives from the third stage were presented. The third stage was mainly represented by its more prosperous and educated members. However, peasants, artisans and women were not allowed to participate in the assembly, but their voices were considered only through their representatives. In that assembly, their grievances and demands in about 4,000 letters were brought by their representatives in the past voting in the state general was conducted by casting only one vote by each state but this time members of the third state demanded the vote the voting to be casted by each members in the assembly while the king rejected the demand all the members of the third state protested and walk out of the assembly hall. The Tennis Court Oath On the 20th June 1989, that is after 15 days from the unsuccessful calling of the assembly, all the protesting representatives of the third stage who viewed themselves as the voice of the entire French nation assembled in an indoor tennis court in Versailles and declared the National Assembly. And this is the picture for that particular day declaring the National Assembly. In that particular day, that is June 1789, the representatives of the third state saw not to disperse till a constitution of France was formulated, limiting the power of the monarch. Then it was drafted under the leadership of Mirabeau and Abbasias. Who is Mirabeau? Mirabeau was a French revolutionary who was prominent in the early days of the French Revolution. He was born in a noble family but was convinced of the need to do away with the society of feudal privileges. He brought out, that is, published a journal and delivered powerful speeches to the crowd assembled at Versailles. Similarly, Abbasias was originally a priest but became a prominent revolutionary leader 
in the latter years. He also wrote a influential pamphlet called What is the Third State? Then the Bastille incident and the Great Fair. While the National Assembly was busy at Versailles drafting a constitution, the race of France was in a chaotic situation with violent disturbances. In Paris, people grew panic as rumors of sending military troops in the city and planning to open fire upon its citizens. So, 7,000 men and women gathered in front of the town hall and decided to form a people's militia to fight against the king's army. Various government buildings were also destroyed in search of arms. This people's militia was culminated that is reached its highest degree on the 14th July in the same year that is 1789 when they stormed and destroyed the Bastille fortress in an attempt to secure gun powers and weapons. Bastille was a fortress built in Paris in the 14th century but used as a prison since the 17th century. On that particular day, they killed the commander of the Bastille and released all the prisoners. The Bastille was also perceived as the tyranny of the king. Today, this event is still commemorated that is observed as a national holiday as the start of the French Revolution. In the following days of the Bastille incident, the wave of revolutionary fervor and widespread hysteria that is uncontrollable mass agitation quickly swept both in Paris and the countryside. Revolting against years of exploitation, peasants in several districts seize hoes and pitchforks, which are the weapons used in agricultural purposes by this pageant, and they attacked sea talks, that is, um, Setox is a castle or stately residence belonging to the king or nobleman. This pageant looted hoarded grain, that is accumulated grain, and burned down documents containing records of pageant's due. This agrarian insurrection is also known as the Great Fair. Uh, this map, which is shown in this slide, shows the spread of the Great Fair and how the bands of pageants spread from one point to another. This incident uh, was also inspired the National Assembly to abolish federalism and obligations of taxes on the 4th August 1789 passing a decree. Decree is a legally binding agreement. So this all are about the beginning of the French Revolution and it will be followed by incidents like um, France becoming a constitutional monarch, then declaration of the rights of man and citizen, French Revolution becoming more radical and the rind of terror and then the rise of Napoleonic era that is the end of the revolution. This all could be learned in the next videos. I hope you like my video. You can also leave my uh, any queries or suggestions in the command boxes. So if you find it useful, please subscribe and like my channel and keep on watching. Thank you.